the National Weather Service. Hello, I'm Kimberly Hefner with another edition of Alaska Weather. Today is January 3rd, 2017. And don't forget, you can always find our information by going to weather.gov forward slash Alaska. And you can also call our information line at 1-800-472-0391. Now, in just a moment, we're going to be on to your aviation, public, and marine forecast. Let's start off the day with talking about the hazards in the area. Looking uh, across the southeast, and I'll step to the other side, we do have a winter weather advisory, and this is for snow along the Klondike High. Uh, the highway mainly for elevations 600 feet and higher and this is going to be starting tonight and that's going to be lasting through your Thursday. Now let's take a look at the weather systems that are bringing weather in your direction. We'll see this first system here to the southeast is bring a very large swath of moisture that's moving up into the southeast. I'll put that into motion again. This is from a low pressure system that's originating just a little bit further south. There is a break between this system and out towards the southwest and we have basic ridging, ridging drying uh, things out across the Gulf. And across the interior areas of the state, we still do have some moisture from a front that moved through earlier. And here's the other system to watch, and this is out towards the western Aleutian and central Aleutian chain. This is bringing a large plume of moisture towards the Pribilof Islands as it works through this afternoon. Here's the surface low pressure associated with that system. This is an occluded front with some snow occurring out ahead of the system. And along the frontal boundary, we're looking at primarily rain uh, quickly moving into the central Aleutians this afternoon. And we did see a mix of rain and snow during the afternoon hours across the western Aleutians um, reported out there at Shimia. Now across the eastern areas, the Bering Dry with that ridge uh, basically expanding from the Gulf back into the eastern waters of the Bering. And then we do have a frontal system that's kind of weakening across the north and northwest coast, some light snow shower activity, activity and some uh, patchy fog out in those locations. We do have the frontal boundary that's moving across south central, so the Copper River back towards the Anchorage Bowl and Matanuska Valley, still seeing some snow activity. Uh, basic snowfall totals have amounted between one to three inches, so expect another one to two inches as that boundary moves through tonight. A mix of rain and snow is noted along the northern Gulf coastal areas, however, drier back towards Yakutat. And across the panhandle, there's that rain with a change over to snow as it makes itself inland north of the boundary. As we head through the night, expect ongoing rain activity from this low pressure moving up towards the southeast. Some patchy uh, fa fog along the boundary locations will reduce visibilities, and some gusty or southerly flow will pick up along the southeast during the overnight hours. Expect uh, light snow activity to be tapering off across south central. Uh, that will be with a moisture at the surface not scouring out. Uh, we will see some patchy fog probably along the Cook Inlet and back towards the western Alaska range as a ridge of high pressure extends into just to the north. Now across interior locations, expect some light snow activity across the Copper River continuing and especially um, out towards the northwest as we have two boundaries that are going to be stalling in the area, not expecting more than one inch of accumulation to the north as the boundary is weak and there's not much upper level support. Now across the north coast, quiet conditions, uh, mainly just cold near the single digits uh, as we have some light snow activity just to the east of Barrow there. Now across the eastern Bering waters, we're expecting primarily just southeasterly flow beginning to increase. Now the main impactful system is going to be across the western and central Aleutians as this occluded boundary stays and moves a little bit further to the north with this deepening low pressure system that's going to be inching towards uh, Shimia and the central Aleutians overnight. So we're expecting abundant rainfall with this system, so might reduce visibilities at times. And with some very gusty flow developing between 50 to 60 miles per hour as the boundary moves through. So look for gusty gales with um, possible storm force winds there for the central Aleutians. And then as we head into Thursday, this boundary is going to continue a northward movement and the wind direction will become more southerly across the Alaska Peninsula all the way through the central Aleutians. 
gusts along this will also be between 50 and 65 miles per hour and we'll see rain uh, primarily with this system might start off at snow as snow but it'll change quickly over to rain with a low pressure nearing Kiska uh, as we head into Thursday. That system is going to be bottoming out around 960 millibars. In the meanwhile, we'll have this low pressure system across the southeast deepening as well. Expect this low pressure to bring ongoing precipitation through the day on Thursday with some snow just across the northern areas of the panhandle there, however staying dry still over at Yakutat. Some light shower activity may develop to the north and west of this low pressure system as weak waves move through, but high pressure is going to be the dominant pressure system across the eastern border. Now across the north and northwest, just some light snow activity uh, continuing with a weak upper level system sending some waves uh, from a boundary that moved into the area earlier. Now let's take a look at your forecast on Friday. Uh, mainly, mainly low impact day across much of south central. We will see some cloud cover, but perhaps some breaks across much of the state. We'll, we'll um, be in rain, however, for the southeast as this low pressure system continues to spin across the southeast, bring some precipitation all the way through the inner channels and the north, the, all the way through the northern channels. However, Yakutat once again staying dry. Now across the western tier of the state, expect this frontal boundary to make progression to the coast. We'll get some strong southeasterly flow. However, we're expecting this front to start breaking up as it pushes into the coast, and therefore we're not expecting much precipitation at this time. Any precip that develops along the boundary will likely start out as snow and then change over to rain as the warmer air mass uh, begins to be uh, pushed up towards the coast there. Now for uh, areas around Kodiak Island, expect definitely a mix of rain and snow as the system just kind of has a moderated air mass and possibly another triple point low developing south of Kodiak Island. Now this low pressure system will wrap some cold area around the backside, but all the bearing locations will see rain at this point. An area to watch is going to be from the north of this boundary towards the Bering Strait, where they keep this colder air mass in place. If this boundary uh, runs to the north a little bit faster, they could see some blowing snow issues in that direction. And we'll also possibly see a mixed precip for the YK Delta uh, as we had late, late day Friday. Now let's take a look at your temperature forecast for tonight. Uh, we're expecting temperatures behind uh, the front across South Central to drop into the teens to mid-20s there along the Gulf Coastal waters, single digits for the Copper River. Mainly in the teens across the central interior and the coldest temperatures along the north just below zero. And across the western half of the state, expect temperatures in the upper 20s to mid-30s across much of the Bering. For the southeast, temperatures will drop down tonight into the mid to upper 30s with that rain system. We're not expecting much war warming, staying in the upper 30s to lower 40s. And then across the interior areas, a little bit cooler as we head into the end of the week. Thursday will be in the mid-teens with only um, in the upper 20s for much of south central. Colder across the Copper River Basin in the single digits. Across the northern tier, not much warming there as well. Uh, just above zero with teens across the Seward Peninsula and lower 30s possibly for the southwest. Now the Aleutian chain will see temperatures nearing uh, the mid 30s to near 40 degrees with that warm core system even creeping into the Alaska Peninsula, keeping all that precip rain for the Alaska Peninsula. Now Friday morning temperatures won't change too much, drop a couple degrees across the Bering and surrounding islands there in the upper 30s. And then across the west coast, look for temperatures in the upper 20s. The interior is going to be much colder Friday morning with temperatures in the single digits, possibly lower across the interior, definitely for the Copper River. They'll, they'll be below zero with teens across the coastal areas of the Gulf with um, mid-20s towards the western Gulf. And then for the southeast, looking at temperatures, ranging between 30 and 40 degrees, a little bit cooler to the north where they're going to be seeing snow up there across the Klondike Highway. And then across the northern tier of the state, look for temperatures um, just out or below, depending where you are on the coast, with the warming, warming temperatures more around the northwest. Now let's head into your Friday afternoon. Overall, uh, the end of the week is going to be a cooling trend, so temperatures here might be a little bit cooler than 
uh, currently expected, but so far we're looking at single digits to the teens across the central interior. That ridge is going to be located right about uh, the northeastern border at this time. So look for the coldest temperatures to possibly um, bring the temperatures down a little bit more uh, through about Fairbanks and also the Copper River looking at temperatures reaching up there right now in the single digits but might be closer to zero if that uh, influence of the ridge is a little bit stronger. Now for the southwest coast, a very sharp change here with temperatures actually warming into the mid to upper 30s. So challenging forecast if any precip goes in across the area Friday morning, it'll quickly change at, at least over terrain as that front breaks up. Northern coast is going to be in the single digits, while the southeast coast is going to be near 40 degrees, even warming up there in the northern channels into the mid-30s. Across the south-central locations, generally in the 20s. And across the Aleutians, they will be staying in the upper 30s to 40s as that system kind of propagates north and doesn't bring much warmer air. However, it does stay steady. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Tomorrow's flying weather is going to be challenging across the state as we have widespread IFR and MVFR conditions from north to south. Uh, we'll see also across the Bering widespread MVFR conditions with IFR across the western waters. Now, as we look to the southeast, There'll be an IFR to IFR conditions for that Thursday morning. As we head into the Friday afternoon, conditions across the southeast are pretty much going to stay the same with improving conditions slightly across areas of south central. However, uh, the Kenai will continue to hang on to those MVFR conditions during the afternoon. Taking a look across the rest of the state, we do have widespread IFR conditions across the Brooks Range and just south, with MVFR widespread across the north and west coast. Now we'll also see IFR conditions across the Bering beginning to spread further to the north for the Pribilof Islands and also across the eastern areas of the Aleutian chain. Now as we head into your Friday morning, look for IFR conditions to continue across much of the Bering with at least MVFR conditions all the way through the eastern waters. We will see some breaks in those clouds across the south central area or VFR conditions with clouds. Now across the northern tier of the state, IFR conditions and MVFR will pretty much be widespread for your Friday morning. And we'll also see continued MVFR conditions across the southeast with IFR conditions just across the inner channels there to the north. And as we head into the Friday afternoon time, frame. We'll continue to hold on to an MVFR ceiling for much of the southeast there in the eastern areas of the Gulf. We'll see improving conditions, however, across much of the southern mainland with MVFR conditions across the north and eastern areas of the state. A little bit of IFR there for the eastern areas of the Brooks Range. However, the western coast will see improving conditions with IFR mainly over the Bering widespread um, towards the Pribilof Islands there, just MVFR to the south across the Aleutian chain. We do um, see a, a small area of IFR conditions across the Alaska Peninsula there Friday afternoon. Now let's take a look at your passes in more depth. We'll see Anatuvik IFR all day as well as Adigan. And for your Lake Clark and Merrill Pass will be IFR to MVFR and Rainy will be IFR to MVFR. Looking at Windy, IFR to MVFR. Same trends for Isabel, IFR to MVFR. Conditions for Mintasta, IFR to MVFR. And we'll see Tanita also, IFR to MVFR. Portage will be MVFR all day, and we'll see Chilkoot and White Pass in that MVFR category as well. For your freezing levels, the freezing level at the surface tomorrow morning will be draped across the Gulf of Alaska and there across the Alaska Peninsula and back towards the just north of the Pribilof Islands and climbs to 2,000 to 4,000 feet across the Aleutian chain and just south. For the southeast, we see 2,000 feet climbing to 8,000 feet over the Dixon entrance. Let's take a look at your icing widespread for Thursday uh, across the state and area waters with some moderate or considerable icing there across the central and southern areas of the Bering and eastern Aleutians. Let's take a look at the jet stream pattern. This is quite amplified for your Thursday with the ridging splitting a low to the uh, west and east. We've got a quite strong jet coming in across the upper levels there. That jet stream's gusting between 85 to 120 knots there to the south. And at the 9,000 foot level, we have ridging also splitting the low to the west 
and to the east. This um, low over here is not going to have as much impact, although we will see some jet maxima towards the 2,000 or 5,000 foot levels around that low. This low will be quite strong, however, with winds um, out of the south between 50 and 65 knots, a little bit lighter on the back side of that low. Now here at 3,000 feet, here's that jet max sustaining between 40 and 60 uh, knots out of the south direction, becoming more easterly across the northern bearing between 35 and 40 knots. Now winds across the mainland are going to be on the lighter side with a east or westerly flow developing just north of the Brooks Range. Now across this low here we'll see a little bit of a speed max between 20 and 50 knots across the southeastern areas of the state. Just to sum up all of your turbulence, the main concerns are going to be across the southeast, below 5,000 feet in that direction, and then areas across the Alaska Peninsula and areas across much of the Bering are going to be experiencing some isolated to moderate moderate turbulence in these areas. So the only area that's going to be free and clear of turbulence is pretty much the central interior and the southern areas of the state. Winter Lake Lodge is on Finger Lake, northwest of Anchorage, about 50 minutes by uh, Bush Plain. Everything at the lodge that you see has been flown in by airplane and ordering produce and getting produce out in 20 below conditions from a 50 minute flight onto a, an ice covered lake has its challenges. And uh, we're also a checkpoint for the Iditarod dog sled race in the wintertime. In the winter, it's a lot of preparation, especially for the Iditarod. Uh, we love the Iditarod because it's sort of a cross-state community event. Uh, at our location, it begins when the Iditarod Air Force pilots start dropping off supplies. We uh, first receive straw, bales of straw, which we then move from our airstrip over to the checkpoint area by snow machine. Uh, after that, we sort of make a great big doggy parking lot out here. And we do that with the groomers, go along the Iditarod Trail and see if there's, you know, trees that have fallen down, any uh, bridges that need to be made over washouts or make sure creek ice is safe. We drill holes into the ice uh, so that there's water for the mushers to uh, add to the dog food when the, when the dogs check in. Most of them spend the night here or certainly rest here and they'll feed their dogs. Over the Iditarod, um, the lodge is packed. It's full um, of our full service guests. And um, at the same time, we also feed the 70 mushers and 10 to 15 uh, checkers and, and vets and um, lots of people that just come in off of the trail. I think even from the fine dining meals that we feed our guests to the food that we feed the mushers, um, I think everybody's kind of surprised at what they, what they get. Mandy will kind of spearhead that and help you guys out. She tries to have everything prepped. I think our guests notice that uh, we are a pretty close family. I think they envy that in some ways. You know, some people say, oh, that's, that's pretty cool having your kids uh, working with you in the business. I, lots of people do that, of course, come up in the business and it's a little bit different. Uh, you know, everybody that works here uh, really has to have uh, the responsibility for a lot of things. We, we have no prima donna chefs, no prima donna guides, no prima donna owners. So if the dog lot needs to be cleaned up, we do it. Somebody needs to meet the airplane, we do it. We unload it, we all the recyclables, the garbage, get it out greet the guests, haul bags, pump fuel, uh, whatever needs to be done. I think, you know, people really get to see my family for who we are, you know, we don't act differently or, or anything. Our family um, really work well together to bring an incredible experience to anybody staying here at the Lodge, um, but we also all bring something different to the table. Um, you know, my sister with her wellness and, and yoga and, and massage and and me with baking and pastry and, and kind of pushing the limits to what we can do. Um, you know, my dad is just still a kid and incredibly excited to go out and, and go to mountaintops every day. And my mom has had the um, incredible culinary career of working with 
some of the best chefs in the world and has had the opportunity to befriend Julia Child and uh, work with Jack Pepin. It's a difficult business and it does take commitment and you really have to be passionate about being out of town and, and the hardships that happen once in a while. But the rewards are great and uh, people are more and more seeking out a more personal interaction with their activities, their vacations, their adventures. We hope our visitors leave Winter Lake with uh, either continued or new appreciation for Alaska. We get people who have saved their pennies for their whole lives to come experience Alaska and they're just in awe of the lifestyle and so we really we really like that. I think just because my family's been doing this business for so long it really doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like we're serving others. It, it feels just like a day-to-day -day living. We're pretty simple people and um, we don't have extravagant things so I think when when we want to treat ourselves or, or relax, we kind of just um, sit back and enjoy the view. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Now on to your marine forecast. Let's look at the ice edge real quick. We're ex basically seeing some expansion of the ice edge along the west coast, uh, basically for the Cook Inlet as well, seeing some expanding in these areas. Not much change anticipated during the next few days, possibly some more expansion. Now let's take a look at the southeast forecast as we head into your Thursday. Expect winds to vary from south um, to the northwest as you go across the waters in this area. We're gonna see primarily a northerly flow at 15 knots, changing over to southeasterly flow to 15 knots across the inner waters, two to three feet uh, for your seas across the inner waters and the outer waters will be between eight and 11 feet. As we head into your Friday, expect a northerly uh, flow to develop, a little bit strong, gustier there across the inner channels and varying directions, becoming more southeasterly flow towards the Dix Dixon entrance and an offshore flow developing. Look for winds, uh, I'm sorry, seas to be between four to five feet across the inner waters and outer waters will be between six to 10 feet the highest seas towards the south there. Now across the northern areas of the Gulf and the western Gulf looking at winds to primarily be out of the northwest between 15 and 20 knots even across the inlet looking at a northerly flow there 10 to 15 knots. Seas across the inlet between 2 to 3 feet and across the Gulf waters look for uh, 6 to 7 feet. As we head into your Friday look for winds to be a little bit gustier on this day with another low coming up. We'll get a little bit more of a gusty easterly flow, small craft across the area towards the north, Prince William Sound and Northern Inlet out of the northeast direction at 10 knots. And then we'll see seas for Prince William Sound and the Cook Inlet at two feet. And the Cook Inlet um, outside of Prince William Sound seas will be between three to four feet. Higher seas across the Southern Cook Inlet area will see between six to nine feet. Look at the Alaska Peninsula, the strong gusty southeasterly flow, fairly uniform across the area till about Kodiak Island where the wind speeds are a little bit lighter. So gales out across the Alaska Peninsula with seas between four to nine feet across the Bering waters and between seven to 16 feet across the Northern Pacific. A little bit um, lighter wind speeds there for the Shelikov Strait as well, two foot seas in the Strait. Now for your Friday forecast, even stronger winds on this day, storm force south of the Alaska Peninsula with gale force otherwise, except for Shelikov Strait, uh, still small craft advisory, a little bit lighter wind speeds for Shelikov. Seas on this day are gonna be between 17 to 25 feet across the North Pacific and 11 to 15 feet across the Bering Waters. Looking at your Aleutian chain for a Thursday, change a wind direction around low pressure system out in this direction, primarily looking for southeasterly flow becoming more easterly as you head towards the uh, western chain and looking at primarily a gale, gale force winds across the core of this low pressure system with seas between 11 and 20 feet across the area and then for the western Aleutians looking at seas as well out there fairly high at 17 feet. 
Now as we head into your Friday forecast, change of wind directions here, we're going to be more of a north to northwesterly flow, gale force on the backside of that low pressure system, and then across the eastern and central chain looking for a west to southwesterly flow as that low lifts to the north. We'll see seas on this day between 13 to 20 feet across the Bering side and 20 to 25 feet across the Pacific side. Looking at your west coast, we're going to see a very strong wind on your Thursday. Southeasterly flow between 35 to 40 knots, higher gusts uh, closer to the core of the low pressure center. And seas on this day will be between 6 to 15 feet. On your Friday, expect a, a little bit stronger wind speed as well, storm force, as you head up towards the coast, 40 to 50 knots. And then we'll see a, uh, seas on this day between 18 to 25 feet. Let's take a look at the north and west coast. We have ice covered areas along the coast with a change of wind direction, a light westerly flow becoming more northerly towards the Bering Strait and Chukchi Sea will have an easterly stronger wind brisk at 25 knots. On your Friday forecast, more of a uniform northeasterly flow becoming more east towards that uh, Bering Strait. We'll see strongest winds towards the strait as that low lifts to the north. Let's recap your forecast uh, real quick. We have this long uh, fetch system. Uh, we're seeing this front move into the southern areas of the Bering with light snow continuing across the southeast as we head into your day tomorrow. Precipitation will be rain across the low pressure system in the southeast with light snow uh, diminishing on your Friday. Thanks for staying with us tonight. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. The National Weather Service.